Hello, and welcome to the Texas Instruments Precision Overview of AC Specifications for Precision DAX. In this presentation, we will briefly cover the three most important AC specifications for DAX, settling time, glitch, and noise. To begin our discussion, let's look at settling time. The characterization of DAX settling time is consistent with operational amplifier settling time specifications, which should make sense as the output op-amp included in the DAC will dominate the settling time figure. Op-amp settling time is usually referred to as output settling time, while a DAC specification is described as input to output settling time. As is illustrated on this figure, the difference between output settling time and input to output settling time is that we include a time period called dead time in the input to output settling time figure. Dead time is specified as the time it takes for the output to rise to 10% towards the desired analog output value from the time the digital code was applied to the DAC. Dead time is caused by the time required for the DAC to latch the incoming data word, perform the required switching, and for the analog signal to propagate to the output. Slew time takes over where dead time left off and is the time required to transition from 10% of the desired analog output to 90%. This specification, along with the remaining settling time figures, are dominated by the output amplifier's characteristics. After slew time, we observe recovery time and linear settling time, usually referred to as large signal settling time and small signal settling time, respectively. At the moment the output passes inside of a predetermined error band and does not leave the band again, the output is said to be settled and at its final value. In many applications, Analog settling time is the dominant figure to consider for a DAX update rate, even if the serial interface is capable of running faster. This is a capture taken from the DAC 9881 datasheet. The settling time measurement is made from when the LDAC signal has fallen low and the input data word begins to propagate through the system. Notice that the dead time is very short, large signal settling time is pretty well behaved, and the settling time is primarily spent in the linear settling or small signal settling region. Remember to pay attention to how the datasheet electrical characteristics table shows the settling time measurements being taken. In this case, the DAC9881 is shown to settle to 0.003% of full scale range with a specific load of 10 kilo ohms in parallel with 50 picofarads and over a transition from code hex 04000 to hex 3C000. This is a large step size and is intended to be a worst case figure. The settling time figure will look much better across smaller code transitions as larger step sizes generally take longer to settle. Related to settling time is another specification called glitch or glitch area. While the settling time specification is dominated by the output buffer, the glitch specification is dominated by the DAC itself and glitch will make contributions to settling time. Glitch impulse area is defined as the area associated with the overshoot or undershoot created by a code transition, and is generally quantified in volt seconds. There are two different types of glitches, single lobe and double lobe, which are mostly dependent on the DAC architecture. The DAC R2R architecture produces the largest glitch in terms of amplitude and duration. There are two primary sources of glitch, both relating to the switches used inside the DAC. First, when the switches transition, the charge injection associated with the switches themselves will contribute a glitch at the output. Second, the switches will not switch at exactly the same time, which will lead to larger glitch impulses. Glitch impulse area is heavily dependent on the DAC architecture. String DAC architectures feature fewer simultaneously switching nodes and will therefore exhibit smaller glitch area than R2R DACs. R2R DACs may switch many switches in parallel during code transitions. A worst-case scenario arises when every switch transitions in an R2R DAC. The R2R architecture displays large glitch areas at major carry transitions, a single code transition that causes the most significant bit to change because of the transitioning lower bits. Some examples would be moving from binary 011 to 100 or 1000 to 0111. Let's look at an illustration for the first example. In order to show more detail, let's look at each switch's transition and relate to what is observed at the output. The R2R structure is shown in three states here. The first switch state is the initial setting of the DAC. At this point, the output is already settled and we have just written the new value. 
In the second state, the DAC enters a major carry transition where all of the switches are briefly connected to ground due to digital propagation delay of the most significant bit relative to the least significant bit. This may be different from device to device. Then, in the final state, the DAC switches settle out and charge is injected from the switches. Following this is the recovery time or small signal settling time. Comparing side by side a major carry transition versus a non-major carry transition, we can see how large glitch is a result of a major carry transition on the order of 150 millivolts. Both pictures on this slide show the DAC9881 stepping up one code. The picture on the left is crossing over a major carry code transition, while the picture on the right is not. So far in our glitch discussion, we've been looking at the R2R DAC architecture because it's much easier to observe glitch area with an R2R DAC. When we compare the R2R glitch side by side with the string DAC, we observe noticeable improvements. There are two solutions to glitch reduction, and they are summarized here side by side to assess the pros and cons. Depending on the application requirements, a simple RC filter may do the trick. If the system needs to maintain good settling time and the RC filter approach is therefore unacceptable, a sample and hold circuit is the best solution. Of course, the other option is to steer clear of R2R DACs and look towards a string DAC solution to avoid large glitch impulses, but doing so may force a trade-off in other specs. Next, we will talk about noise. As in almost any device, there is going to be noise associated with DACs. In noise-conscious applications, the goal is to minimize the DAC noise as much as possible to achieve optimal performance. In order to do that, we need to look at the three major sources of noise contribution. The DAC's internal resistor network, the output amplifier, which may be integrated, and the reference voltage, also possibly integrated. First, let's examine the resistor network. For an example calculation, let's look at an unbuffered R2R M DAC which is simply a resistor ladder without an output amplifier. The easiest way to think of the resistor ladder when analyzing noise is as a single equivalent resistor, which changes value as you change code. At full-scale code, all the switches are switched to the I-out node, basically creating a resistor in series with the reference and I-out. If you were to look back into the DAC from the I-out node, you will see an equivalent resistance equal to the entire resistor chain. TI datasheets often specify this impedance in the electrical characteristics table as the reference input impedance. Once you have the equivalent output impedance at I out, you can calculate the resistor noise, also thermal noise, from the network using the resistor thermal noise equation shown here. One subtle but important note is that there are two resistances of interest here. First, there is the equivalent resistance from the resistor network, which is code dependent. Second, you have the feedback resistor, which is used in combination with an output amplifier to create an output voltage. When the DAC is in a gain of minus 1, the value of the feedback resistor is equal to the DAC resistor network at full scale. Both of these resistances need to be accounted for when calculating the thermal resistor noise of the system. Our second source of noise is the DAC's output amplifier. This output amplifier may be included internally in the DAC, or you may have the option to choose your own external amplifier to meet your system needs. Examining op-amp noise has four basic components, 1 over F voltage noise, broadband voltage noise, resistor voltage noise, and current noise. Current noise and resistor noise have a lot to do with the implementation, and less to do with the properties of the amplifier itself. For our purposes, we'll only consider the 1 over F and broadband noise component, since these are more intrinsic values to the operational amplifier, and will help us select our amplifier intelligently. The key thing to illustrate here is that in a typical application, our focus will be on DC operating conditions where the bandwidth is limited, and the broadband region will not contribute significant noise. As a best practice when your amplifier is external, search for devices with low 1 over F noise. When it comes time to do noise estimations for your design, Check out the TI Precision Labs video series on op-amp noise for guidance on how to calculate your amplifier noise. When the amplifier is internal to the DAC, most of the work is already done for you, and the noise is characterized in the DAC datasheet. You can generally find a noise number in the electrical characteristics, and a plot of the noise spectrum with other graphs further in the document. Last, we need to look into the reference voltage. Looking back at the transfer function for the DAC, we see that the noise and gain of our DAC is directly dependent on the reference voltage. Therefore, it is very important to have a few quick design steps to optimize the design of the reference voltage. The initial accuracy and output noise level of the voltage reference is directly coupled into the DAC. 
The accuracy of the voltage reference is a DC phenomena, however the output noise is an AC event. As the output voltage of the DAC increases, per programmed input code, the output reference noise level increases in magnitude. Keep in mind there are other sources that could also have an impact on the noise, such as power supply transients and the cleanliness of the ground layer. That is why well-regulated supplies and a proper layout are a major focus of every design. In summary, we learned about the three major AC specifications that are relevant to precision DACs. Settling time, glitch, and noise. We also learned about single and double lobe glitches and why they exist. And we also covered the three major noise contributors, the resistor network, output amplifiers, and reference voltages. Thank you for watching this video on AC specifications for precision DACs. Please watch our other videos on precision DACs to learn more.